This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Here it is on a given Wednesday, and we always have Energy in America on Wednesday. And we have Jeff Kissel uh, from ePrink uh, to talk about, gee, some very sophisticated issues you need to know about. It's not only that we study energy in Hawaii, but we, st we should study energy globally and see how that affects Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Jeff Kissel. Thanks, Jay. It's very nice to be with you again. It's the same here. So let's talk about two things today. And the first would be the, uh, you know, the change in standards, effective 2020 and in LSFO, low sulfur fuel oil. There's one thing, and later on we'll talk about the tariff that President Trump just imposed on solar panels. Both interesting, both affecting the U.S. energy markets, and both affecting Hawaii, right? So let's talk about the LSFO. What's happening? Well, this is a really interesting topic because right now, international shipping is at an all-time high in terms of the amount of cargo being moved, the number of ships on the high seas, and of course, those ships run on oil. Um, unfortunately, they haven't figured out a way to get renewables into those ships. More importantly, today those run on high sulfur fuel oil. The International Maritime Organization, which is a, a group of ship, which is comprised of a group of ship owners and regulatory uh, officials, look at all kinds of things relating to safety, fuel efficiency, and sulfur content for the fuel. And the fuel itself today can range up to three and a half percent sulfur when the ships are out on the open seas. And we're closer to the shores of certain uh, North American and European nations, they have to burn lower sulfur fuel. Mm. But by and large, today they're burning three and a half percent sulfur fuel. In now, the sulfur fuel, the more sulfur in the fuel. One half of one percent. And that changes the whole dynamic of fuel for Hawaii's power industry. Unfortunately, we have not weaned ourselves away from fuel oil for power generation. Even though we've added renewables to the mix, we're actually burning more fuel in Hawaii for power generation today than we did 10 years ago because the demand for energy is higher. Mm. Unfortunately, that means higher prices for oil. Mm. So that's a real conundrum that we're going to have to deal with in 2020. And it could push rates back up to the levels that we saw them at when oil was approaching 150 and $200 a barrel, even though oil itself is still around $60 a barrel. Well, is the low sulfur fuel oil a matter of the natural characteristics of the oil, or is it a, a matter of refining and processing um, you know, crude oil into LSFO? Indonesia used to be a source for low sulfur fuel oil because the oil, the crude oil that they, that they exported um, naturally had fewer, um, um, cost, uh, lower sulfur content than most other crude oils. Unfortunately, Indonesia is no longer an exporter of uh, crude oil. The crude oil we get from places like Venezuela, it used to be lower in sulfur, has diminished for various reasons. So you actually have to run it through the refinery and, and scrub the sulfur out of it. But that isn't the real problem. The problem is when these ships... We're going to take a, a short break until we can reconnect with uh, Jeff Kissel. Uh, this is Energy in America on, on the high tech. seas. Uh, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back after we can reconnect. Uh, sorry. Break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Okay, we're reconnected with Jeff Kissel. Here we are in Energy in America, uh, and we're talking about LSFO and how the standards are gonna change in 2020 and give Hawaii a, head a, a headache, I think. So isn't it possible, Jeff, 
for somebody at one end or the other end of the transit of this uh, oil to make um, high sulfur fuel oil into low sulfur fuel oil by some kind of chemical refinement process. The refineries are capable of doing it. The point is the demand is going to go up from roughly half a million barrels a year, uh, half a million barrels per day per year, to over three million barrels per day per year. And that means Hawaii is going to have to compete with every ship on the high seas to buy its fuel. And that means higher fuel prices for Hawaii's power generating plants. Well, and there's really no way around it. Yeah. And that means markedly higher fuel prices, close to the two hundred barrel uh, two hundred dollar a barrel mark. What are we paying that we now? We saw during the height of the fuel spike almost ten years ago. What are we paying now? Fifty dollars and change. Right now, crude oil prices are around sixty dollars a barrel. Fuel oil prices are around seventy-five to eighty-five dollars per barrel. So, so this, we're, that's more we're, than we're double. A big shock up. Yeah. More than double of what it costs that now. Passes More than right double. through to the people who use electricity in terms of a fuel surcharge that the utilities quite rightfully have to pass along. Otherwise, they can't afford to make the electricity. What about buying futures? I mean, if I were a utility company, I knew this was going to happen in 2020, I would buy futures. Is that, would that help um, ameliorate the problem? Well, many fuel, many companies are, but regrettably, the Hawaii uh, market is tied to the Hawaii refineries, and it's pretty much impossible to hedge that on the futures market. And, and what is the relationship of this whole uh, change in standards to uh, the, the Paris Accord uh, and to the you know the global movement you know to uh, cut greenhouse gases and and I guess uh, sulfur in general. Is this, is this IMO change a function of an environmental regulation or, or environmental, um, uh, environmental discussion and, and resolution at the Paris Accord? Well, yes, it's in response to the international treaties to reduce pollution. More importantly, the ships are moving toward a clean fuel renewable standard eventually. Mm -hmm. This is just one intermediate step on the way. You, you know, they're experimenting with LNG to move ships, they're experimenting with solar cells and a lot of other fuels. And they're determined to, to take as much fossil fuel out of dirty fossil fuel out of shipping as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. your, your prediction about the market, I wonder if this is the kind of thing where you ramp up uh, to a higher price or whether it, I mean, or, or it happens all of a sudden. In other words, uh, should we expect prices to increase as we approach 2020, or will prices just go skyrocket at 2020 when the new standards come into effect? They will start to increase, probably not until uh, 2019. But you know, that's just around the corner. Yes, it is. And there's there's almost nothing we can do to stop it, except to redouble our efforts to diversify our fuel supply, and move away from oil. Um, as quickly as we can. Unfortunately, the, the second barrel of the shotgun has just been fired by the president, and that is the tar increased tariffs on solar panels. So just as we were moving toward utility scale solar in Hawaii, the cost for that is starting to rise as well, and likely to rise very, very substantially. Yeah, now that's really interesting, because on the one hand, the, uh, the uh, International Maritime Organization is is going to cause a huge, uh, you know, increase in in um, fossil fuel, uh, and and I was going to ask you the solution, and the solution is obviously to move to renewables at a faster clip, but now we've just been stopped from doing large scale solar, community solar, and utility solar because the cost of solar panels will increase by virtue of Trump's tariff, uh, twenty percent tariff. So uh, when you start doing the numbers, Jeff, what does it look like? 20% is, so I just add 20% on the top, is that what I do? How do uh, I look uh, at what it's going to It's really cost? insidious because a utility is entitled to a, earn a rate of return on its investment. So what used to cost a utility $1 million is going to cost them $1.2 million. And they're entitled to earn about a 12% rate of return on that. So you're going to be paying 
an additional 12% on $200,000 per million forever. And if you look at the, the compounded uh, uh, impact of that, it's more than doubling the cost of the installed solar plant every three years. Solar today costs about twice what what conventional fossil fuel generation costs in Hawaii. So you're going to take that and you're going to add at least one third more to it. You're approaching a dollar a kilowatt hour, whether it's from fossil fuel or from solar. My goodness gracious, we, we scream and squawk about 30 cents or 40 cents or even 50 cents. Now you're talking about the combination of these two effects, these two disruptions in our energy system um, going to cost a dollar an hour, a dollar a kilowatt hour. That's, that's really hard. What kind of effect do you think that will have on the state? Well, I, you know, the economists can measure it uh, against the gross domestic product of Hawaii, but you're certainly looking at at least a one to two percentage point negative impact on the growth of that GDP. All right, that means fewer jobs, lower paying jobs, lower investment in Hawaii's infrastructure, higher costs to operate transportation. You, you name it, it's going to go through the economy. It's going to be very hard on a lot of people. Yeah, they say that, uh, you know, an, an economy that has uh, uh, energy resources that are cheap, those energy resources, that, that will allow the economy to grow. And of course, it's the other side also. If you don't have energy resources that are plentiful and cheap, uh, that, that will constrain the economy. I guess that will come into play for Hawaii when we have to, we get pinched at both ends this way. It's not a good story. So let me ask you this, Jeff, what do we do facing these two disruptive events? Well, you can't change what's occurred. You can only look forward. And the, the way to look forward, in my opinion, and as I don't know, um, we want to look through the, the slide pack on this. But what you've got to do is, is diversify the energy sources. Just like you manage your, your IRA and your retirement savings accounts, you want to diversify. We, we need diversified energy sources for Hawaii. And they can be clean, should be clean. They may be fossil based, but they, they also can be renewable. Mm -hmm. Hawaii's taken a great step forward um, with renewables. It needs to invest more in that. Mm -hmm. But we need to step away from the highest cost of energy, which is oil. And there are some alternatives for that, as we both know. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about alternatives. If what comes to mind, for example, for me is if we can't get solar panels, say from outside the country, I guess that's primarily China, even Chinese companies here that would be buyers of the Chinese panels, uh, they, they can't bring them in except with that 20% tariff. When we should consider what? Um, I guess we can't go to Europe either, right? They make, they make panels in, in, in Europe. Uh, we could we consider buying them, but that would also be subject to the 20% tariff, I guess. Well, of and course, the Chinese are making the panels in Europe, largely. Ah. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> they got a lock the, on things. You know, the, the one thing we could do easily is change the tariff and allow people to put solar on their rooftop and sell the power back in the grid. Because when I put solar on my rooftop, I don't have to give the utility a rate of return on that solar panel. Right. It may cost me 20% more, but once I pay the 20% once, I don't have to pay it again and again. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the solution. Just pay the price and, uh, and generate it back. What about the, what about the possibility of, of manufacturing solar panels in this country? We, we did that for a while, but I think it diminished as the Chinese ascended in their manufacturing. Could we do it again? Will this tariff have the intended effect, the effect intended by the White House uh, to improving uh, Americans' manufacturing capability? Everybody says no. And I'm, you know, I'm not the, the expert, but I understand that if I'm going to have to invest three or four or five hundred million dollars in building a solar plant, a solar panel plant here and distributing it and putting all that investment in place, 
only to have the next administration change the tariff structure and put me out of business. I'd be very reluctant to make that investment. Yeah, that's true. Because if the next administration reverses it, then you're, you're in trouble. And uh, you've just made an investment you can't earn a return on. That was, so I don't imagine people are going to go out and do that. American capital won't go out and do that, not with the volatility of this particular administration. Well, what about other sources of renewables? I mean, is this a time for us to reconsider the limitations on geothermal, for example, on the Big Island? Is it a time for us to look at ocean energy uh, and, um, you, you know, uh, deep sea water energy? Um, should we consider other renewables now? Is it worthwhile? We absolutely must. And, and that's part of diversification. It's geothermal. It, it could be wind. It could be energy differentials. You know, the other thing that really you know, people don't like to do is to be energy efficient. You know, you and I have talked before, you put two people in the front seat of a car, you double the passenger miles per gallon. Well, it seems clear that we should do that. We should, we should look at these other alternative sources. I think we've been, you know, in the last few years, been focused on, um, on solar. Solar has been the, our primary direction in renewables. And we haven't spent as much time and effort on wind. We should be. Uh, and on these other possibilities, geothermal and uh, deep sea water and the like, ocean energy. Uh, so may, uh, maybe it's time for us to do that. But you know, my question to you, and this is a hard one, Jeff. I like to ask your hard questions. Um, what, you know, how do we get that through politically? How do we impress the legislature or the governor, as the case may be, um, you know, with, uh, with, with, with incentivizing these other renewable sources in order to avoid the pinch that we're going to experience between the solar tariff and the LSFO standard? Well, unfortunately, many governments make choices that have long-term consequences for short-term political gain. And in Hawaii, our government did exactly that. They said that we are not going to move to an intermediate fuel like liquefied natural gas. They said we are not going to permit economic rooftop solar anymore. And we're going to move to total renewables without a plan to do it. And Jay, you know, that that's just a formula for disaster. And the disaster now is right around the corner. I think people like you need to advocate for the kinds of sensible alternatives that will allow us to diversify our energy base. And that, that's really where it, what it comes down to. Yeah, the problem is we're here in an election year. I, you know, the, the problems you describe, the disruptive events you describe, are happening pretty quick uh, and are going to have an effect pretty quick. Um, but we're in an election year. Nobody wants to take chances in an election year. So it's hard to get the government to uh, spend money on incentives. It's hard to get the government to take bold steps, either at the executive level or certainly at the legislative level. So I think we're, we're in a, a kind of a problem. Let me ask you this. Um, you know, we've, we've been having these conversations on and off for a while, uh, and you mentioned natural gas, LNG, uh, for example. Um, you know, is this a good time for Hawaii to consider or reconsider using natural gas uh, imported from the mainland as, as a way to, to solve the, uh, what do you call it, energy price uh, uh, crisis that we're looking at? Yes, there are a lot of alternative fuels to oil. And there are clean ones and dirty ones, but natural gas, propane, ethane is a is a fuel that's in uh, in use. Um, even coal has a place. As we move toward that renewable economy and move away from from these fuels that are really not good for the environment and definitely not good for the economy. Well, you've left me worried, Jeff. I hope we can continue this conversation and find um, you know, other ways to solve the problem. Um, but I suspect that the, the pincher uh, movement that you've described between the one thing and then the other thing and both things affecting the price going forward is, is going to happen without real political action. And so we'll be walking right into the storm. And, and by the way, at the same time, um, you know, we should be building resilience on energy. At the same time, we should be dealing with climate change and all the things involved. Energy is one of those things. Uh, so this is a year, despite the fact this election year, this is a year where the legislature should be super active 
to try to handle these things coming forward. Any thoughts on that? Well, I, the only thing I can say is trouble comes in threes. Because in addition to the price spike in oil and the tariff on solar, it might be time for a recession in 2020, and the economy might, might not be in, in the shape it needs to be to weather that storm. Are you talking about the Hawaii economy, the national economy, or the global economy? Uh, well, the national and the global economy. You know, we've been steaming along at, at such a, a heavy clip. It, it's hard to believe we can continue indefinitely. And you know, we can see our way through 2018 pretty easily. 2019 doesn't look bad, but you know, 2020 is is really up in the air. Well, I I, I wish we had a happier discussion today, Jeff. <laughs> but clearly, we're going to have to carry it forward. Next time you're around, let's let's have this discussion and check back and see how things are evolving. Uh, after all, energy is at the heart of our economy and our future. Uh, so we need to keep very close tabs on it. And that's why uh, Think Tech Hawaii has to keep close tabs on you, Jeff Kissel. We'll, we'll look forward to staying in touch, Jay. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jeff. Aloha. Aloha.